Hello, and welcome to Shaking and Sipping. This is the show where we shake up, or today stir, a cocktail or other mixed drink, talk a bit about its history, some variants, etc. Take a sip, see how it is. We're continuing our quest to work through the IBA's official list of cocktails to see how those stack up. We're in the second section. These are the contemporary classics, and this week's contemporary classic is the Sea Breeze. Now, the Sea Breeze, I'm not sure how classic it is in terms of modern memorability per se. There were a whole class of breeze drinks, which were very similar. Um, I'm sure I'll mention some. And those were among the more popular cocktails in sort of the 60s, late 50s, into the 70s, that time period. So they certainly have a history there. And some of the drinks connected to them definitely resonate today. Um, and so I think it makes sense to be on the list. I just, I don't think it's a drink you're going to hear ordered terribly often, at least not in my experience. Now that said, there's not a ton of history to dig into this week. Um, we don't really know where this drink came from. We know what drink sort of inspired it. Uh, and we have sort of rough time and play time ideas, but we really don't know who came up with it. So I'm going to try to keep the history pretty short and sweet as we just roll through this one, because um, I just don't have a novel to give you this time. I will say there is another drink called the Sea Breeze. Uh, there's at least two other drinks called the Sea Breeze. Uh, one of them we're not going to make because, uh, as far as I can tell, a Seagram Sea Breeze which is something heavily marketed by Seagram's uh, in the sort of 1950 to 1960 time period, is literally a gin and tonic made with, with Seagram's gin. Nothing else different about it. They even say in a lot of the advertisements, it'll be like, try a Seagram Sea Breeze. And then in parentheses, it's like, the best gin and tonic, comma, gin and tonic made with Seagram's. It's like, okay, so that's not a real thing. But for some reason, they called it that, so that's cool. Um, but there's an earlier drink. There's a drink that went back probably to the 20s. The first place we see it is in the Savoy Cocktail Book, which you know we bring up all the time. And that's, of course, 1930, so we know it existed by then. So this is the Sea Breeze, or sometimes Sea Breeze Cooler. Uh, it's in the coolers section of uh, the Savoy Cocktail Book. A cooler being basically sort of a highball type thing. It's a long drink, and it's usually made with either club soda or... Um, ginger beer, something like like that, um, but it's usually a mixture of light things, some citrus, etc., and then a large portion of something sparkling to be a light, cooling sort of drink. So we're just going to throw one of those together real quick. Cubes into a highball glass or similar. We're going to add half of a lemon to it. That's a sort of very 1930s style, not actually have a proportion spec. Then we're gonna add to that 30 milliliters or one ounce of uh, apricot brandy or uh, apric abricot du Roussillon. Um, so a brandy that tastes of apricots, not necessarily an eau de vie made from apricots. And then the same amount of a classic dry gin, I'm using Bombay. And so this has kind of Paradise vibes, if you remember, gosh, whatever that would have been, like episode six or some, something. The Paradise was also gin and apricot liqueur. The difference there was instead of lemon juice, uh, we were using orange juice. So still sort of the same basic flavor profile, just with that additional sweetness and the additional oranginess of it. And then that one, of course, is just served, you know, up from that point as opposed to being topped with some sort of water. Uh, they were out of my normal club soda, so we're using uh, San Pellegrino sparkling mineral water. Slightly different sort of carbonation, but it's gonna get the job done just fine. We're gonna give that a stir. Garnish on this is traditionally gonna be um, a sprig of mint. I don't have any handy. We've used mint in several recent ep ep episodes, and I don't have any right now, so that's okay. This is a probably 1920s, 1930 at the latest, Seabreeze or Seabreeze Cooler. So nose is that apricot, but in a kind of muted way. I like that fine. It's mild, but it is um, totally a cooler sort of thing. This is, is giving me sort of... Um, 
adult Gatorade vibes. Citrusy, little bit of, or decent amount of sweetness, gives you still a little bit of pucker, um, but not strong, fairly dilute. Um, yeah, I like this a lot. It's a warm day today. This is, this is not unwanted. All right, so we have the original Seabreeze, which as I said, is entirely unrelated to later drinks uh, like the Seabreeze and the Bay Breeze and other things of that ilk. But what we're not gonna do is go to making the IBA spec of the Seabreeze just yet. Instead, we're gonna make what probably is the predecessor to the Seabreeze and the Bay Breeze and the so on and so, so forth, which goes under a couple of different names and has slightly different versions and ratios depending on who you ask. The history is really murky on this one. The basic idea is that sometime in the 50s, people started playing with cranberry juice a little bit. And um, there's a lot of stories that tie Ocean Spray into this. O ocean Spray, if you're not familiar, is a huge cooperative of cranberry growers who tried to market cr cranberries to the public, basically, uh, starting like in the 30s some, sometime. But they were, they had become Ocean Spray in the 50s. And sometime in the late 50s or early 60s, they tried to help push some integrations of cranberry juice into mixology. And so this drink goes by a couple names. I, the most common is the Cape Cotter, but it is very similar, if not the same thing, as a Cape Cod or as a Harpoon. In all of these cases, essentially what the drink is, is a drink that you may not think you've heard of or seen or had, but there's a decent chance you have because it's a vodka cranberry. That's all it is. Uh, it's a vodka cranberry, usually with the garnish of a wedge of lime, sometimes with some lime juice added, though it does not appear from my research that that's the case in the very earliest versions. So it is a vodka cranberry. We can argue about proportions of it. Some recipes say you can use vodka or light rum. There's a few recipes that say um, that gin was the original mix in. I'm not sure that that's true. Um, some of the later Ocean Spray recipes in the 70s actually say, actually mention gin, but those same exact recipes were printed by Ocean Spray years earlier without gin as an option, so they actually added it later. No one really knows exactly what happened here, but it's a very simple drink. Lots of people, I'm sure, have come up with this one independently. Um, there's a version of this in, I think, um, David Embry. Uh, under a different name, but that he thought he created it himself in like the late 60s. Uh, and it, it also was just vodka cranberry and I think a squeeze of some kind of citrus. So this drink, uh, there's not much to it. It's a vodka cranberry maybe with some lime in it. So, okay, fine. So I'm gonna grab just seven milliliters or so of lime juice. That is about one quarter of a fluid ounce. To that, I'm going to add 30 milliliters, or about one fluid ounce, of vodka. And I'm going to add sixty and thirty to make ninety milliliters or about three fluid ounces of cranberry juice. And here I would not use the, I wouldn't get some like random cranberry apple hybrid weird juice cocktail, but um, just buy the regular cheap, like sweetened cranberry juice. If you buy the super fancy all cranberry pure not from concentrate stuff, it's so tart. You're gonna have to sweeten this up a lot. Then we're just gonna give this a little stir. And I'll throw a little wedge of lime on the side there. And this is a Cape Codder stroke harpoon stroke Cape Cod stroke vodka cranberry. Oddly, not a ton going on on the nose. I get the lime. But the cranberry and vodka just kind of mellow together. So flavor's nice. I like that with the lime in there. Um, I think without the lime, that's a little bit one note and boring. The lime brightens it up a little bit. But I mean, it tastes like a vodka cranberry. There's not really any exciting flavor descriptors that I have for you there. 
The only other thing there is to say about this drink is, of course, if you recall our Cosmopolitan episode, we talked about a few potential origin stories of the Cosmopolitan, and a couple of them involve someone making a Cape Cotter, but then uh, adding the Cointreau uh, for various reasons, and we can, yeah, or whatever. But, but anyway, that's this drink's real claim to fame and sort of modern place of presence is that this is the proto-Cosmopolitan, probably. So, how did we get from that original uh, Cape Codder sort of drink to the Sea Breeze? I don't know. Uh, so that, it just shows up. I, I truly have no idea who created it or where. I'm assuming America, I'm assuming it's East Coast. That's about all I know. Sometime in the 60s, I'm, I'm fairly confident, maybe the very tail end of the 50s, but sometime in the 60s became much more popular a little bit later, uh, later 60s, into the 70s, and then apparently there was some big push. I was too young to recall this, but I think it was Absolute um, who put, did an ad campaign based on it in the early 90s really have any recollection of that, but so maybe it had some presence then. I really just have uh, very little to say about where this drink came from, but it very much is in keeping with sort of the Cape Codder vibe. This is going to be vodka and cranberry, but here instead of a small amount of lime juice, if at all, we're using a larger amount of grapefruit juice. All right, so I've got some ice in another highball glass, and I'm gonna start by juicing this here grapefruit. All right, we'll start off with 30 milliliters. It's about one fluid ounce of grapefruit juice, and I'm gonna grab my strainer. Since we're not gonna be otherwise straining the drink, um, I just think that makes sense to get some of those seeds out. I'm not so much worried about the pulp, and more don't want all those tiny little seeds. All right, then I'm gonna add 40 milliliters, or about one and one third ounces of vodka. And finally, for our cranberry juice, I'm actually going to have to cut it slightly shorter than I'd be a spec. We're supposed to have 120 milliliters, or about 4 ounces here. I just put in 90 we are just about at capacity. I should have stuck with three cubes in this one. Okay, that brings it up to three and a half. So 105 milliliters. I think that's gonna be just fine for us today. Give that a little stir. And this one's also typically garnished with a little lime wedge. And that is very nearly to IBA spec, the Sea Breeze, the modern version. Again, I'm smelling that lime. Don't smell a ton of anything else. Oh, that's good. So the grapefruit does take that into a slightly different direction. Grapefruit is a little bit more sort of flavorful than lime in a way, like lime has a lot of flavor, but it's mostly sweetness and acidity. There's less sort of lime character than I'm getting out of the grapefruit, which has a very distinctive sort of timbre of its own. Yeah, it's good. Uh, that's plenty of cranberry juice. I'm already not discerning any vodka in this whatsoever, so it's purely a matter of the ratio to cranberry to grapefruit. Um, and there's not too much grapefruit, it's just the grapefruit shows up sort of front of palate, a little bit higher in the middle palate. There's this interesting tangy grapefruity thing with the cranberry sort of layered underneath it. It's good. Um, it's nothing special, uh, but it's fine. Well, thanks so much for coming along this week on a very sort of cursory look at a few cocktails, the Sea Breeze and um, the Cape Cotter and the other Sea Breeze. Uh, there are other similar drinks. Um, like I mentioned, there's the Bay Breeze, which has pineapple juice in it. Um, and people sometimes also think of this uh, 
The sea breeze is sort of a marriage of the Cape Codder and like a greyhound or a salty dog, uh, which is a grapefruit and traditionally gin, but also grapefruit and vodka drink. Um, so if you're interested in these kinds of fairly simple, straightforward drinks using sort of a clear base spirit and um, some sort of intense fruit, uh, give it a try. I totally get their place on like a, you know, as like a beach drink, as a, I'm eating lunch outdoors on a patio and it's warm. Um, I get it. Uh, it's just not a drink that's gonna get me incredibly excited. This one honestly is the best of the bunch to me. This, this one does a little bit of something. Please do all the YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, etc. Uh, visit the blog shakingandsipping.com, we'll have a write-up on this and each other drink. Many weeks we'll have IBA in real life the day after the video posts, which will tell about going to a local Seattle cocktail bar and ordering the drink, how they make it, if they have variants, etc. I uh, don't know if we'll do that or not this week. If we do, you'll find out by either checking the blog tomorrow or following on Twitter at shaking underscore sipping. Uh, don't post often, but do post when we're doing things like IBA in real life. That's all we've got for you this week. We'll be back next week with the next drink from the IBA's list. Until then, happy sipping. Cheers.